Dear friends, on the 9th of October 2012, the Taliban shot me on the left side of my forehead. They shot my friends too. They thought that the bullet would silence us. But they failed. We told you about the 14-year-old girl in Pakistan who stood up against the Taliban so that girls could go to school. Malala Yousafzai has been using the attack meant to silence her to raise awareness about her cause. There is now a movement for Malala to receive the next Nobel Peace Prize. I'm Adam Ellick, a reporter for The New York Times. That's me in 2009 when I made two documentaries about Malala before she was a star. This is the backstory. It's the story of a young girl, her ambitious father, and the media, and the role that we all played in her rise and in the tragedy that almost took her life. When I saw her for the first time, a very newborn child, and I looked into her eyes, I fell in love with her, believe me. I love her. I love her. Malala lived in the Swat Valley in northwest Pakistan. It's a place where only one out of five girls goes to school. And at the time, it was being overrun by the Taliban. She only spoke when spoken to. And when she did talk, she was articulate and poised. I want to become a doctor. It's my own dream. But my father told me that you have to become a politician. Uh, but uh, I don't like politics. In the time I spent with the family, it became clear to me that her father, Zaudin, was the most influential person in her life. I have the greatest daughter ever born in the world. Zia was a self-made man. He was a poet and an idealist, and also a man of contradiction. Uh, outwardly very beautiful, but inwardly broken, shattered, and to pieces. He owned a girls' school, yet his wife was illiterate. And because of the conservative culture, she couldn't take part in my documentary. In home, all the activities, all the look after is done by the wife. And uh, outside of the home, uh, for example, earning money, doing some business or job, that is done by the man. When I first met him, he was scrambling to save his family business. The Taliban had just made an announcement banning girls from going to school in SWAT. I had many discussions with my editors in New York, with a Pakistani journalist colleague, and with Zia himself about whether this documentary might put his family in danger. And I think it's a great cause. And if I die for it, there would be no better chance for me to die better than this. Zia was already quite well known as an activist in the region. His goal was to get the Pakistani army to come into SWAT and take on the Taliban. He quickly became aware of how his telegenic daughter could bolster his cause in the media. Malala. Malala Yusufzai. She is there to speak for the students, to speak for education. Her role is very much powerful and effective in this regard. I admired Zia's revolutionary zeal. But the way he pushed Malala to join the fight sometimes reminded me of a parent pushing their kid to become the next tennis star or beauty pageant winner. My first documentary aired in February 2009, and it ended with Malala making an appeal to the world. Save our school, save our world, save our Pakistan, save our son. A few months later, war broke out between the Pakistani army and the Taliban. Suddenly there was a huge firing and missiles. I was weeping that why we have to leave Swat. We are innocent. What is our sin? A million people were forced into exile, including Malala's family. It was pure chaos. Malala went with her mother and her two brothers. They stayed at a relative's house near Abbottabad. Is this your new home? Yeah, it's my new home. Zia moved six hours away to the regional capital of Peshawar to keep raising awareness for SWAT. And for the first time in years, he was living without his wife. Uh, I, once again, I washed my clothes myself. Can you show me? I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, why not? If you wish, I will, but it, it will take time. Get to work. 
Z and I became close. This is a detergent. In a country where Americans are viewed with suspicion, we trusted each other. I respected him. Zia's activism kept him apart from Malala. I have no time to miss people, especially my family. But Malala missed him. I must be a politician to serve this country. So now you're agreeing with your father. Yeah. Explain this to me. And now I'm agree. I'm uh, agreeing with my father, and uh, it's my father's dream that you must be a politician, and I agreed with him, and now I will be a politician. In July, the army beat back the Taliban. I rode home with Zia and the kids while his wife followed us in another car. It was a bumpy ride on a blistering hot day. You've been very quiet today. No, she's very quiet. But you should be a bit uh, excited and please say something, yar. Yeah. It's not good. You don't have to be excited. But what are you thinking? There is a fear in my uh, in my heart that uh, the Taliban can recollect their their um, power. Pakistan was and still is a very dangerous place. Fifty thousand Pakistanis have been killed in terrorist attacks since 9/11. The Peshawar Press Club, where Zia and I often met, was bombed the same year we made the film. At the time, Swat was a brutally violent place. Beheadings were so common that the town center became known as Slaughter Square. But the Taliban mainly targeted men, so Zia and I, perhaps naively, assumed he'd be the potential target. But I'm of the view that death cannot be a hindrance in my way. And even when we spoke explicitly about death, we never discussed Malala's safety. It just never occurred to us. A specific time is given to a person from the skies, from above, from Allah, and you cannot shorten it. You cannot prolong it. After an eight-hour car ride, we finally arrived at their house. The kids ran in to check on their pet chickens, which the family left behind during the evacuation. Our chicks are died. Malala broke down. I suspect it was the culmination of months of anxiety, separation, and fear. And it was one of the few times when I was reminded that she's just a 12-year-old girl. Later that night, we sat down on the floor for dinner. No, please sit. If, uh, if once again, she, if once again you are ordered officially that you leave the city and go away, what will you do? You will only just like last time. You will just just cry and you will uh, pick up your bag and baggage with your father and you will leave this city. I will. You will resist to some extent. What do you think? So. I will leave. The... You will leave the city. Yeah. Why? Because they can kill us. After what you've been through in these three months, you would never leave again. I'm asking you the question that you asked your daughter. Asperger, I get sick, Anna. I can't say it. I can't say it. It's quite a difficult question. Not so simple. On my final day shooting the documentary for the Times, Zia invited me into the family room for what he said was a special surprise. His wife was there. Now she didn't want to show her face on camera, but she did sit in the room with me, and he said I was the first man outside the family to meet her. For a while, life seemed to improve in Swat. There were far fewer targeted killings by the Taliban. Enrollment in Zia's school soared. The family received donations, awards. The Pakistani press made Malala the de facto voice of Swat. As she became more confident, she started speaking out more forcefully against the Taliban. They were like the barbarians, and they were like some kind of other organisms. Then she started receiving death threats, and two years after I left Pakistan, the Taliban shot Malala on her way home from school. The Taliban issued a statement on why they tried to kill her. I read it over and over again. 
They condemn Malala's praise of President Obama and her harsh words against them. They also blame the foreign media for not telling their side of the story. They endorse girls' education, as long as it's an Islamic education. But even if the Taliban vanished tomorrow, most girls still wouldn't be in school. Only nine countries in the world spend less money on education than Pakistan. And there's a culture of men that still believe women belong at home. Let us pick up our books and our pens. They are our most powerful weapons. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. Education is the only solution. Education first. Thank you.